pray wholeheartedly for the well-being of the people and the leaders of the Republic of Azerbaijan, the only secular Muslim country that is a true friend and ally of Israel and Jewish nation. Thank you for attending this special event. As you might know, Azerbaijan, there is a town named Erbezel, or Red Town. This town is believed to be the only all-Jewish residence in the world that exists outside of Israel. Tonight, this program is meant to be an educational program so that we as a congregation, as a community of Jews, will become more aware of the world issues and those issues related to Azerbaijan. It is my utmost pleasure and honor to introduce my good friend, Honor Nassimi Hoyer, Consul General of Azerbaijan, Dean of the Los Angeles Consular Corps. Under our advice, leadership of our president, Ilham Aliyev, Azerbaijan is today a place where Sunni and Shia Muslims, Christians, Jews, Baha'is, Harim Christians, and others live peacefully together. The Jewish community has been living in Azerbaijan for the last 2,000 years, always in peace and dignity. Over 30,000 Jews continue to call Azerbaijan home today. We are proud that the Jews of Azerbaijan have never faced any problems of discrimination in our country. As the Israeli ambassador once put, there is zero anti-Semitism in Azerbaijan. World War II alone, Azerbaijan sheltered over 10,000 Jews fleeing from Nazi persecutions. Israel was one of the first countries to recognize our independence and open its embassy in Baku in 1992. Since then, the relationship has developed tremendously. We cover so many different areas, from agriculture to defense industry to tourism. As the young is proud to provide around half of the oil Israel imports. The bilateral trade during the last few years has been measured in billions of dollars. We show every day to the entire world that it is possible for Muslims and Jews not only to live peacefully together, but also be friends and brothers to each other. Today, Azerbaijan has only one major challenge, and that's the ongoing military occupation of around 20% of Azerbaijan's territory by neighboring Armenia. When Azerbaijan was weak in the early years of its independence, Armenia attacked and invaded a large portion of our nation. As a result of this undeclared war against Azerbaijan, over 1 million Azerbaijani civilians were expelled from their homes and lands, both from Armenia and the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. These people are still refugees and internally displaced people and are not allowed by Armenia to return to their homes. We appreciate the support by Israel for Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. In 2015, while addressing the United Nations General Assembly on the, at an event of Holocaust, Israel's President Reuven Rivlin mentioned specifically the Hojali massacre that was committed against Azerbaijan civilians in 1992. We have here tonight two survivors of that massacre, Durdana Alayeva and Jehud Alekbar. We are very grateful for the support from Israel and the Jewish communities in Los Angeles, the United States, and around the globe. Azerbaijan wants peace. Azerbaijan wants its refugees to be able to return to their ancestral lands. And we are very uh, much working on our end to make it happen to achieve peace. I'm sure one day, and that day is not far away, we will see both Azerbaijan and Armenian communities the Karabakh region that is under occupation at the moment, living together side by side, peacefully, as they did for many centuries before. Thank you. This is a map of Azerbaijan's territory.
areas that remain under the military occupation. The red area that you see indicates the Nagorno-Karabakh region, including my hometown of Shusha, where I grew up. Altogether, around 20% of Azerbaijan's territory is under military occupation. The height of the Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict from 1988 to 1994 resulted in the absolute devastation of our ancestral lands and the expulsion of all Azerbaijani residents. Today, the surviving Azerbaijani community of Nagorno-Karabakh region lives dispersed across different cities and villages in Azerbaijan and still unable to return home. Our homes, mosques, schools and gardens, everything has been utterly demolished by the invading forces. The Nagorno Karabakh region, where I grew up, has been traditionally famous for its carpet making school, producing carpets that have adorned many uh, palaces across Europe and reflected in many famous European paintings. For the occupiers, taking power land and so many lives was simply not enough. Their goal is a total rewriting of history and cultural cleansing that helped them in this effort. By erasing the physical presence of our history in Nagorno Karabakh, even rewriting the signs of the walls of temples, they hope to completely hide even the memory of our existence. As I wish to convey you the tragedy of thousands of thousands of Azerbaijani refugees resulting from the ongoing occupation of our ancestral lands. The blue mark you see uh, uh, near the border with Armenia shows the location of my ancestral village in the heart of the fascinating nation. I was born and raised here until the age of 88, but the occupying forced to the violent end of our life there. A few months before the occupation of our town, a massacre was committed by Armenian troops against Azerbaijani civilians in Khojal. And with me here today, tonight, are the survivors of that massacre, Jordana and Jehu. Müsaitlerden gördüğünüz gibi, insanın gayet olduğu en istekçilikleri, işkencem, düşergelerinde görmüşem. İller sonra özünde cesaret toplayıp, milletime, aileme ve dostlarıma karşı görevden değişikliklere karşı çıkış ederek insanların birbirine ve dünya için edebileceği en yakışı emellere bari olduklarını da başa düşmüşem. As you saw in my testimony, in the torture camps I have experienced the worst of what human beings are capable of. Through years of healing, finding courage, and speaking out against the atrocities committed against my nation, family, and friends, I have also realized the best of what people can do for each other and for the world.